In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's great to be with you all here today. Hi, everyone. Hi, Riley. I did promise I'd do that. Gran says hi. I hope when I get home I actually see some high comments in the threads. Now, I know I'm speaking from many of our hearts when I say that it is hard not being able to be together, to touch and to connect. Live streaming, video chats and phone calls help. And I've been amazed by how many parishes and clergy around the diocese in Australia how they've found new and creative ways to connect to their people to try to bridge the isolation. It's, it's wonderful and amazing and inspiring, but nothing is quite the same as being physically together. During this period, it makes us realise how important we are to each other. It gives us a renewed appreciation of our friendships, family and our communities where we gather in fellowship out of our love of God and seek to enrich each other's lives. Now, the world has changed, and not only do we miss those that we are isolated from, but now we have to learn to live 24-7 either on our own or with members of our household, where things can get tense and chaotic as we learn to live, work and play together with housemates and treasured loved ones, and I know that's not an easy feat. The love of my life, my treasured husband, asked me the other day if I could create an office downstairs rather than sprawling all my papers over the kitchen table. I think he's sending me a message. Whenever I read today's gospel, which is full of so many themes and commentary, I always come unstuck on how Jesus interacts with his disciples. The disciples are cooped up in a house together, doors locked, out of fear that they might be next or something's going to happen to them. And then Jesus stands among them. And that's the bit, that right there. What do you think was going through their minds right then and there? It's tempting for people to think when bad things happen that they're being punished by God for something, that they have done something wrong and God is raining down vengeance on them. I wonder if the disciples were worried about this, considering the last time they had been with Jesus was in the garden where they fled, leaving him to a mock trial to be publicly shamed, beaten, and finally murdered by crucifixion. And the betrayal doesn't end there. Peter denies even being associated with him. I'd also like to note that the Gospel of John is the only one that has a disciple at the cross. The other Gospels have the twelve conspicuously absent. Now, I ask again, what do you think would have been going through the minds of the disciples when Jesus appeared? Maybe fear? Fear that their betrayal and abandonment of Jesus meant that they were going to be punished, that he was back to get them, that he would yell at them or tell them that they were bad disciples, how much they'd failed him, or maybe at least have mentioned it. No. No, instead, he says, peace be with you. Then they rejoice. This is the moment where James Allison calls the joy of being wrong. Our God isn't a God who is itching to punish us or to exact vengeance. They suddenly get it. The disciples' hearts change. Their whole view of the world and the nature of God forever changed. Our God is a God of forgiveness, wholeness and relationship. And this is the moment where all of that is solidified. He then goes on to say, Peace be with you. As the Father sends me, I send you. 
And then Jesus breathed on them with the same breath that brought to life the heart of Adam in Genesis. When God said how very good the creature of the dust of the ground was. In this scene we have the Holy Spirit breathed out of the word of God, Jesus, into the lungs of humanity. Freeing them from fear and hate. And most of all, trusting in God's continual forgiveness for everyone. That there is nothing we can do and no place we can be that ever separates us from the love of God. And here we are, thousands of years later, gathered in our own homes out of fear of what could happen outside. And it is real, and the reality is scary, and we mourn our liberties and our connections. But we remember that Jesus is standing among us. We can never let fear and grief make us abandon the people we are called to be. We are called to be people of peace, who create strong, kind and forgiving relationships with each other that we don't become frightened of each other and how we will be treated in our own homes and for the wider world. We are people filled with the breath of life, the breath of God, to honour each other by keeping people safe. As the Father sent Jesus, so he sends us, even if sending right now feels a little more like staying put. We know we are doing this out of honour to all. The peace we can bring right now is keeping people safe the best we can and to look forward to the day where we can all peacefully and safely meet again face to face. In Jesus' name. Amen.